Okay, hi everyone. So, another video this time on mechanics. This one we're on projectiles, which some of you may have done in physics, but um, as you know, kind of maths and physics we don't always ask the same questions and we don't normally have the same approach because of that. So, let's go back to kind of basics on projectiles. So, we've done SUVAT, which is always in one dimension so far. It was, so, it was either up or down or it was left or right, right? Or in one direction, even on a slope, okay? But with projectiles, we need to combine two directions together. So <clears throat> if we imagine this is like your y-axis or your j-axis, if you're talking about in vectors, and this is your x-axis or i axis or i, if you're talking about in vectors again, projectile means that you're literally flinging or projecting an object at whatever angle you, that you please. So if I call this angle alpha, right, I'm projecting this object. So if you imagine I was to throw a stone uh, from the origin, okay, I would follow this path, wouldn't it? I'd project it with speed, u, meters per second, and it would follow this kind of hill path, wouldn't it? It would rise up and then it would come back down. All right, so there are a few things to talk about here. So this u, I said that was speed, right? So this hypotenuse here, this is speed, which means, as you know, the magnitude of the vector. Okay, so in this case, it's the magnitude of the velocity vector, u, all right? So how do we deal with a problem like this when it's at an angle rather than, you know, uh, just up and down or left and right? Well, what we need to do is we just need to split the speed into up and down, left and right, like you have in your assignments so far. So can you see that there's a horizontal velocity here, component to the velocity, and there's a vertical one as well, because we always go from tail to tip, okay? We're going across and then back up. So how can I express this, what I would call UX here and UY here, okay? Well, we can see this is a right angle triangle, so just like resolving forces, you know that cos alpha is adjacent ux over your big magnitude u, so the hypotenuse u. So you can literally say ux is u times cos alpha, and the same here, u sine alpha. Just like with forces, then the one next to the alpha is your cos, and the one opposite is your sine. So that's that, right? So we also need to build in so th some of the assumptions that's going on here. So <clears throat> this shape that I've drawn, this is actually called a parabola. And you know what a parabola is. Parabola, like y equals x squared. Anything which is a quadratic is a parabola, all right? But obviously, this isn't y equals x squared. It's got a, some different function, but it has an x squared in it, OK? So this means a parabola means it is a type of quadratic. It's a quadratic curve. Okay, and quadratic curves are symmetrical. Okay, so this curve that I've drawn here, dotted out, this is actually symmetrical halfway. All right, so where the maximum point is, it's going to be equal either side. And we'll prove later how I know it's a quadratic curve. All right, so there are a few reasons why it's a quadratic curve, and uh, we're going to boil that down to our assumptions. So what have we assumed? The first thing is that I've projected a particle. And you could get asked this all the time, what is your model assumed? We're projecting particles, and as a result, because particles are easy, easy to model with, it's hard to model with a 3D object or even a 2D object, um, this would mean there's no air resistance. So that's not new to us. Air resistance isn't something that you would even contemplate until kind of second year university because it really is very complicated. And that has an effect, no air resistance, right? Because it's, it's a particle, it's so small, the resistance from the air is so negligible that we basically ignore it, okay? And this has repercussions for this parabola because essentially what is making this object hit the ground? Right? Well, let's look at it. So let's go. Uh, we can look at, and this is how we would solve problems. 
what happens in the vertical and what's happening in the horizontal. So let's deal with the horizontal first. So if I do like my SUVAT table, okay, so S, S is my distance across. So in this case, I'll just call it X because it's on the X axis and this will be helpful for later. U, what's our U? Well, it's U cos alpha. V, mm, don't know. A, what's our acceleration? Is there anything accelerating it left and right? No, because there's no air resistance. There's nothing slowing it down. It's assumed that it's going on forever at a constant speed. So A is zero, right? And T is just time. So we know that S equals UT plus half AT squared. And S in this case is x, so it's in the x direction. So you can say x is u, which is u cos t, uh, cos alpha, sorry, times by your t. But our acceleration is zero, so it's gone. So for the horizontal, it's very easy, the formula. It's just literally x equals initial horizontal velocity times by t, okay? So remember that. So x equals u x t. So initial velocity in the direction of x t. Right. <clears throat> Whereas vertically, S equals U equals V equals A equals T. Remember, I'm putting arrows next to which bits I'm working with. Right. So you never need to draw a SUVAT table for horizontal now because you know this formula here. Vertically, however, if my distance across was X, my distance up and down uh, is going to be... <coughs> My distance up and down is going to be y, okay? So s equals y, uh, my displacement, remember. u equals u sine alpha. v is, I don't know, a is minus 9.8, because the only thing acting on this is gravity. That's the only thing pulling this thing down, right? And t is t. So s equals ut plus half a t squared would apply. Yeah, uh, S is in the y direction, so we could say y is u sine alpha plus half minus 9.8 times t squared, okay? So can you see that up and down is more complicated than left and right? Left and right, the velocity always stays the same. And think about what that assumption means. The assumption is that if I shoot, fire a bullet out of a gun, the only thing that's stopping that bullet is the fact that gravity is pulling it down gradually. Do you see? So the bullet would come out and it would just start falling gradually down, but its horizontal velocity will not change. It would just hit the ground only because it's decelerating up and down. Okay? So things to remember, no air resistance, dealing with a particle, and it's a parabola, so it's going to be a symmetrical shape either side. So a few examples. Example one, a, a particle P is projected from a point O. So <clears throat> particle P, there's O, uh, with speed 28 meters per second. So remember, that's our hypotenuse here. So 28 with elevation 30 degrees, and it's going to drop down like that, right? <clears throat> the great Find uh, the greatest height, and it strikes the plane at A. That's what it says here. So find the greatest height achieved by P. So we're talking about this point here, aren't we? The highest point. And remember, as it's starting and ending in the same place, this is symmetrical. And it, so that's quite helpful if we need it, right? So part A, how do we find the greatest height? Hmm. Okay, so we must be talking about up and down. But before I even start then, I should really split my velocity into components. So this is 28 cos 30, and this is 28 sine 30, right? straight into it. So S equals U equals V equals A equals T equals S. Don't know what the height is, so I could call it Y if you want. Let's keep it consistent. U is our 28 sine 30. V must be zero because at the greatest height it's not going up or down anymore. It's literally just pausing. So it must be stationary and it's decelerating with minus 9.8 and time is time. We're trying to find the greatest height, so don't care about t. So v squared is u squared plus 2as. So from our calculators, we get 0 equals 28 sine 30 squared plus all that kind of stuff. Rearrange. Okay. Uh, go on then, I'll just do it. So 0 
28 sine 30 all squared plus 2 lots of minus 9.8 times s. Rearrange for s. And you'll get the greatest height if we whack this in our calculators. So 28 sine 30 squared divided by 2 times 1.8. 10. 10 meters. Okay. So the maximum height above ground is 10 meters. Now part B says find the time of flight. Right. Find the time of flight. Hmm. <coughs> I could use the symmetry here. There's two ways I can do it. I can find the time that it takes to get to 10 meters, which is the highest, and then I can double it, couldn't I? Because it's symmetrical either side. But I will just talk through in general, for general problems, it's probably more helpful to look at it like S vertically. Okay. So S, what is the what is the vertical displacement between here and here? Well, it's nothing, isn't it? When it hits the ground, it hasn't actually moved up and down, hasn't been displaced. U is 28 sine 30, uh, V, don't know, minus 9.8, and T, trying to find the time, don't care about V then, so S equals UT plus half AT squared. S is zero, 28 sine 30, T minus 4.9 T squared. Take out a factor of T, 28 sine 30 minus 4.9 T equals zero, and solve for T. So T is either zero, which we know earlier, so don't care about that, and T must be 28 sine 30 uh, divided by 4.9. So 20 over seven, but because we're working with G, 2.86 seconds to 3 SF. Okay, so that's the time of flight. It's in it's in motion for that total amount of time. The distance OA. So part C. The distance OA. Well, OA is the horizontal distance, isn't it? So these kind of clues tells me which bit I need to go for. So for C, the horizontal distance OA. Right. So OA. As we know, distance or x, right? Distance is your x equals your initial velocity going horizontally. So 28 cos 30 times by your time, and your time is 2.86 seconds. So OA, keep it exact in your calculator, times 28 times cos 30 is 40 root 3, so 69.3 meters across, okay? There we go. And I do actually have a simulation for you, um, which you may be able to see here. So I put in 28, I put in 30 degrees, okay? And you can see the, you can see what's happening to the velocity. So the horizontal velocity, if you watch the horizontal velocity, it's not changing at all, that vector. Whereas the vertical velocity you can see at first the speed is going up but then as it gets to its maximum point is zero and then on the way down it comes back down okay so last bit of that problem i'll do it on this fresh slide find the speed of the projectile the first instant when it's 10 meters from the ground so again where were we so 30 degrees straight away doing your uh, 28 here so 28 cos 30 and 28 sine 30, right? And we're here. We care about the vertical, don't we? Because it's saying when it's 10 meters above the ground. So 10 meters above the ground is somewhere like here, right? This is 10 meters. So the displacement we care about is 10 meters. And it's saying find the speed of the projectile. Okay, so speed, remember, speed is the magnitude of the velocity. So I have 28, the starting point, right? That was my starting point. And after time, that 28 cos 30 isn't gonna change, but the vertical one will change, which means my magnitude of the velocity will change, okay? <clears throat> and we'll talk a bit about that a little bit more in class. This vertical velocity is, is coming down, isn't it? As we go round the curve, right? I've got horizontal and up. And then if I take a point here, it's horizontal, but it's a little bit more up. 
uh, it's a little bit less up, sorry. Here's horizontal and a tiny bit up, can you see? Um, so what's happening is that vertical component is growing shorter. So if we're looking at s equals 10, <coughs> u equals our 28 sine 30 because we're up and down, v don't care, minus 9.8, t is t, and it's asking for the speed of the projectile when it's 10 meters from the ground. So I'm looking for v. So I said uh, don't care any earlier, but I really do care. So v squared is u squared plus 2as. And remember, this is the vertical one. So v is the square root of that stuff. So I've got 28 sine 30 all squared plus 2 times minus 9.8 times by 10, uh, which is 0. <laughs> of course it's 0. Of course it's 0. Uh, let's pretend that it's not 10 meters, um, because remember we said the highest point was 10, of course, duh. 8 meters, let's make it 8 meters, right? So 8 meters there, this is actually, S is 8, okay? So we'll make it 8. <laughs> so therefore we get 28 sine 30 all squared plus uh, 2 times minus 9.8 times 8. So if we square root that, V is 14 root 5 over 5, which is exact, but if we put this in here, right, and use our Pythagoras, you can see that the magnet it's asking for speed. What is the speed? So we need to do this one squared plus this one squared, um, all square rooted would give us our new magnitude, okay? So this is our vertical component. So vertical component squared plus horizontal component squared, all square rooted. So speed, magnitude V, well, the magnitude of V is your speed. So 28 cos 30 squared plus 14 root 5 over 5 squared, all square rooted. Okay, so we should get plus 28 cos 30 squared, square rooted. So we'll get 25 meters per second. Okay, right, um, this video is getting quite long, uh, yeah, the video is getting quite long, so I'll make another one.